Hi everyone and welcome to the French Watch Collector. Today on the bench we have a Rolex Explorer 2, a reference 15570. Um, yeah, and this one has a couple of issues we will see a bit later on in a, in a video. A uh, beautiful example with the white polar dial. Uh, so first I'm gonna check if the watch is uh, working correctly. We're gonna wind the watch a bit, but oh, it doesn't start here, just tapping on it and you see the second engine just starting. Just give it a good wind and after we're gonna check if the our hand and the GMT function on this watch because it's a GMT watch, here we see. Just see if the date is changing correctly. Oh yeah, you see the jump there, it got stuck. Again, let's check, like that's a nice jump. And this one, let's see, oh, you see stuck. And I'm just tapping on it and it just jumps. There's something wrong with the date. So usually when we're gonna do the full service, we're gonna see that and uh, as well we see there is a, an issue so you see like so the gmt function where we can change just the hour hand um but yeah that's uh yeah a couple of issues on this watch and we see a bit more when we when we open it and when we service this watch if we have a few more issues gonna remove the bracelet first nice and easy with the holes we just press the pins and take the bracelet out beautiful bracelet actually on this uh, on this watch you see the case back is uh, still have the sticker on it and it's quite in good shape actually the, this uh, this watch the case and the bracelet bezel as well is in good shape and look at on a time grapher uh the amplitude is very good at almost 300 degrees that would be nearly impossible to improve that but yeah, it's uh, gaining a few seconds a day and a bit error is 0 0.2, so maybe we can improve that. But actually, the person sent me this watch for service because of this uh, date issue and the GMT issue we see a bit later on. So I'm using their uh, Rotec tool. I will put a link down below in the description if you want to buy this tool. It's very, very nice tool as well with uh, customization to open like any uh, watch case back and especially on Rolex, yet you need a, a special uh, tool to open a Rolex. Uh, you can buy this, uh, these tools on a custom website from Orotech. Great tool if you want to open, change a seal or adjust a watch, even if you are a hobbyist, that would be a very nice quality to open, uh, to open a, a case back. Okay, just opening the watch now and look at this beautiful movement, a 3185. So for the 31 uh, family and uh, obviously this one being the GMT version. Just check there is a weight for the automatic system. No, no much play. That's good. And looks like everything is working as it should. Just going to remove the seal there. Going to take out the winding stem and the crown. Should be able to slide now the mechanism out of the case. There we go. Just aligning the two screws that are just unscrew there and that's it we have the movement and the beautiful dial god the white is so pure actually I thought that's a personal taste but um yeah i know it's m most of the people prefer like the it's the same on the on a rolex daytona they prefer the the white dial um but actually i think i prefer myself i prefer the black um like on a rolex like the the black dials are so deep obviously like this white is so crisp as well but i don't know there is something about uh, the black dial from rolex what's nice on this one is like you you see the black uh and this is like uh as well surrounding like the the index for the for the hours it's uh, very very nice just taking the hand now with my presto tool and actually the hour hand is very low so I just took like the top three hands, the GMT, the minute and the second hand. And uh, our hand being solo and close to the dial, I was just removing with my uh, manual pair of lever there if you want. That's it, perfect. Always protect the dial. Just gonna release a dial fist screw there, two dial fist screw on this model there on each side. And we think we can take this beautiful dial out lovely like so smooth and so glossy like so shiny very nice just put it in his box for safekeeping i'm gonna remove just 
release like this C clip there just to remove the rotor for the balance, I mean, sorry, for the automatic uh, system, winding system there. The rotor, and now that's a full system, <laughs> just jump actually because it was a bit of uh, power in a, in, a, in a movement. We are just gonna release the power now, just to make sure like nothing is jumping during this assembly like we just did with the automatic uh, system there. Okay, the power is out from the main spring and the movement should come to a stop. Just gonna wait a few seconds and we should see the balance slowing down and coming to a full stop there. It's coming, there we go, perfect. Okay, so now there is no power, we can disassemble the movement safely. First, we're gonna remove the jewel on top there of the balance. Gonna clean all these jewels individually in a, in a machine we see later on. Like the purpose is gonna be to disassemble everything and all these parts are gonna get clean in a machine and we're gonna put them back together with the putting proper oil and grease on, uh, on each on each parts. Checking, checking out, taking out the pallet fork there. Ratchet wheel, beautiful with this gold color. You can see there we have a jewel as well for the Bile arbor, that's nice when you have jewels, like you know that like, there is no wear, almost no wear on a barrel arbor, so you don't have to worry about any play there. Just taking the click there. And we have like some intermediate wheel transmitting the power basically from the crown when you wind your watch to the ratchet wheel. Gonna take out there this bridge. We can see the beautiful barrel always on Rolex with this sunburst effect on top. And on this caliber, eh, you have an extra bridge there where you will have the crown wheel underneath that we'll disassemble later. And this is a hack. That's what make your second stop ticking when you pull the crown. Basically come in contact with the balance assembly and uh, it fully stops the balance. That's how you hack function is working. And always, uh, like on most Rolex movements, you will have these uh, jewels on the escape wheels that you need to take out the cable, like just a cap jewel on top there. Again, just to clean it like uh, individually to make sure everything gets clean in the machine as best as we can. And now I'm taking out the train of wheel bridge. With this screw there, which is someone to come. Actually, it's stuck to the bridge. Okay, we're gonna remove it later on. And now I can take each single wheels. Oh, just jump there to escape. Perfect. It looks quite good actually. And this long wheel with like a long hand there where you have the second hand that come attached to it on the other side. We have this little intermediate bridge here. Okay, so we move to the calendar side just holding the spring, just to remove the tension and we can grab the date disc there with a carbon tea tweezer to make sure that we don't scratch it. And uh, we have this plate on top that we're gonna, it's a huge plate actually, very heavy as well, like very thick, yeah? Where you have uh, the spring underneath and there you will have a, a wheel which stays stuck but we'll detach de it. And look at this there. That's where you have the GMT function of this watch. Look at this jewel, it's huge. Like a huge jewel with uh, like some parts inside. And that's what makes a click and of the GMT function, you know, when you have the hour hand clicking just to adjust the hour for the GMT. Just there is a masterpiece of engineering with like a lot of small parts in it. A hidden jewel there, driving the calendar mechanism. Very tiny, I just want to, don't want to lose it. And you see there I'm keeping the tension with the spring with one tweezers and taking out the part with the other one. So a bit of tweezer gymnastic there. If you want to come, there we go. That, that's you can release. And the spring can stay there for during cleaning. It's not a, a problem. Taking the rest of the parts for the calendar function there. And basically what we are left after is with the keyless work, uh, which is uh, pretty standard. 
we have the minute wheel, couple of intermediate wheel. One was stuck, you see, like to the other part underneath. Removing the cannon pinion there. And that's, uh, can release now this center wheel. Okay, and there we are on uh, on the yoke, uh, sorry, on the uh, keyless work. That's a yoke we just see underneath, like uh, with this part on top, that's a yoke spring. That's a yoke there. And that's it, we'll have only a couple of parts left with the winding stem, the clutch, and the winding pinion. And the movement is fully disassembled. We just need, obviously, a few parts. You saw we, we still need to disassemble like some sub-assemblies. Again, we're gonna remove all the jewels for them to get clean individually. Uh, very important that this uh, get cl very, very clean and very, very well because yeah, you don't want any uh, oil or dirt staying inside because yeah, that's uh, one of the main functions that need to be very, very smooth uh, with oil. And that's why you have a, after a good amplitude of the watch, so that's something that you, you don't want to, 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 to miss and just to make sure that they get clean, that's why we remove them from the mechanism. Just taking out there the automatic uh, system, you see with like uh, the two reversing wheel, which are very iconic like design from Rolex with these two big uh, red wheels. Taking out now the barrel assembly as well, just popping the lid up there and we're gonna take the, the spring inside of this main spring barrel assembly there. First we need to take out the barrel arbor which is quite tight there. To be very careful because this they can jump as well and the spring obviously you need to be very careful as well because you don't want the, dream, the, the spring to jump out of the barrel. That would be catastrophic and it's a huge spring with a lot of strength. That it is out. And now I can take the main spring. So the amplitude was good, so I think there is no need to change uh, no need to change the main spring. We're gonna clean it in a machine as well, and uh, put it back. And uh, I mean, rewind it first, and put it back in a in a barrel arbor a bit later on. And okay, we have this small part there, the crown wheel, which was just under this uh, small bridge. You can see just a few parts there from uh, from the disassembly. Just like to keep the parts like in uh, in groups. Uh, when I put them in a basket as well for the for the cleaning machine, we keep them in group. That's make easy after when you reassemble the watch. Okay, so now I'm gonna put all the parts in these baskets, and um, we're gonna clean and put these baskets like in a, in a in a washing machine and clean all the parts. She has quite a lot of parts and you see them. Keep them in this uh, little individual uh, chambers if you want, just to make sure they don't mix. And I just put them in this part and there we go to the cleaning machine. So the cleaning will be done in three stages. We'll have one cleaning stages, two rinsing, and the last one will be uh, a drying. I would like to use this uh, opportunity to tell you that I have a Patreon page. You can find a link down below in the in description. If you want to go there and support the channel, we'll be really, really, really grateful. I would like to thank uh, my Patreon, Matt, Christian, David, Shelby, Jan, Christian, Corne, Alan, David, Ted, Tony, Michael, Stephen, John, Tim, and Gregory. Thank you so, so much, guys, for supporting me. And if you want to join the group to support the channel and help me put uh, better content out there, I said you have the description down in the uh, link, sorry, down in the description. You can go there and support my channel. So thanks in advance. And as well, if you did not subscribe to my YouTube channel, you can click on the subscribe button. Click on the blue thumbs up if you like the video. It will help promote this video to many uh, more watch enthusiasts. And click on the bell icon so like that you will get a reminder every time I put a, a new video online. Okay, so now I'm going to start reassembling the watch. First, I'm gonna rewind the mainspring with uh, using this uh, winder from Bergeon to, to rewind the mainspring. Okay, so just need to gentle push there on the end there. You see the automatic spring and you see with this Y shape at the end. 
and that it is fully wine. We can remove the handle there and we'll have the main spring inside ready to get back to go back to the barrel which one now I'm uh, oiling and greasing with uh, graphite grease on the on the wall. Being an automatic uh, watch, the spring is gonna slide on the wall there. That's why I put uh, grease on the on the wall. Just put the grease a bit on the bottom to lubricate the mainspring. And that's it. We put the mainspring back in the barrel. Putting back the harbor there, and we should be able to ready to oil as well the harbor from the other side. Perfect. We can just put the lid and close this uh, barrel assembly with this little tool there. Very handy tool. Just put it in, just press, gentle press on it and tack the lid is closed. Just did an epilam treatment on all these parts. I'm cleaning the pivot there, just remove epilam from the pivot and uh, we're gonna oil the balance jewel there, just putting a drop of 90-10 on the jewel, putting the chaton back on top. There we go. Just gonna do the same thing on the second one because obviously you need one on each side of the balance wheel. That's what I said, like they need to be ultra clean and you need to be like mirror finish almost uh, because yeah, that's what makes the uh, you have the oil and the lubrification of the pivot of the balance wheel and you want it to be like as clean as possible uh, to run smooth and obviously have a, a good amplitude. Just closing the spring there. Gonna put back the capstone there for the escape wheel. Closing this spring again and you will see this one will oil it a different way. Putting the second stone there on the balance gonna check if it's rotating perfectly yeah yeah that looks good checking if the air spring is flat if it's not misshaped and uh, and it's uh, on this one is good just using my automatic oiler there to put a drop of oil for the escape wheel just gonna do the same thing on uh, on the other side there on this bridge just put the capstone and uh, use my auto automatic oiler from the underside to put a drop of oil And you see me there already putting quite a lot of oil and uh, on a watch there is a different type of oil like this uh, blue one is quite uh, it's a grease actually which is quite thick with high viscosity so if you have a parts that see a lot of friction that's why we use a higher viscosity grease you will have oil as well with different viscosity like uh, low and medium viscosity most of the time um, so yeah that's very important if you want your watch to run and have a, a good amplitude and to run basically uh, uh, nicely uh, without too much friction and as well to avoid have parts uh, wear down uh, because yeah like you have a lot of parts which is contact metal against metal so if it's not lubricated obviously the metal will wear and the uh, parts will need to be changed and on a Rolex it can cost a lot of money to change the parts so that's why you want to to do a service on your watch at a regular interval just to make sure your watch is running good in the first place and as well to avoid like uh, irrever irreversible damage on some of the parts of your watch. Okay, so now I'm just starting by assembling the keyless work on this watch. And you can see there with this extra part there, which is used for the quick save date function and GMT function. Putting the setting lever in place. These springs that come on top there, keeping the seating lever in place. This is little screw there. And now we're gonna put the seating lever spring. With this long arm actually, which is acting as a spring and that's what put the tension when, uh, when you pull the crown and give you the different position, like in this watch you will have three positions, obviously. 
that's it now I'm arming this spring putting a bit of grease there again just to have a smooth operation and as well not to wear the parts too quickly and just checking the functionality yeah that looks good can remove the excessive grease like excess grease on a, on a part and we move to the balance side putting this center wheel so this caliber is a 3185 uh, obviously like I said it's a GMT and uh, it was used in this Explorer and as well uh, in uh, GMT Master 2 uh, the two uh, GMT watch from, uh, from Rolex uh, this movement was started in 89 actually and uh, he replaced uh, 3085 uh, and uh, on the Explorer 2 he went in production he was in production with the Explorer 2 with this uh, reference of uh, Explorer 2 until 2006 so that's a long time from uh, from 89 to 2006 uh, very very uh, reliable obviously like uh, all the Rolex movement he was just after replaced with the 31 86 um, that did not stay in production I think very long um, but yeah that's a, a very very famous GMT movement uh, based on the 31 family yeah, from uh, from Rolex and like I said he stayed in production for very very long very long time so that's a, a testament to the quality of this uh, of this of this movement obviously if he was produced for so many years it uh, means that he was running uh, very well it was running good like um yeah so that's a, a great great movement putting the train off wheel here in place and look he went just straight away all the wheel fell into the pure so sometimes you get a bit lucky yeah? you don't have to to like uh, touch a bit the wheels to make sure they fall in a in a pivot point like that just put uh, the part on top and each wheel fell into the pivot holes that's good we have the hack now just put it in place before I put this bridge see with the 3185 just uh, etched on it like with the gold uh, gold color that's very nice love the uh, the finish as well on this Rolex movement it's quite nice you see like a different like you will have some uh, uh, like a kind of sunburst uh, finish on perlage which is all this round uh, with different sizes of round as well um, yeah that's very nice and uh, like I said often like a lot of people criticize Rolex for their caliber being very simple and they are not simple at all like they well obviously it's not like Patek Philippe or, or Vacheron or so even like Gégère Le Coute, probably they do a lot better decoration on their movement but um, yeah like they look nice yeah and especially like you can see like look all the jewels everywhere like you see for example in this uh, barrel arbor you will have jewels like in a lot of places like on a calendar mechanism very very uh yeah very, the conception like they they make this movement is is great uh so yeah i found i found that obviously like they they get a reputation bearing very good movements but yeah it comes from the the qualities they made in engineering and uh, development uh, this, uh, these calibers are, are great the click you see there something uh, just put something it was it's not correct just put the uh, spring on the wrong side just need to here we go pull it that's it that's the way to do it need to go on this side and now I can put the click and it should work a bit better now when I put the ratchet wheel yeah there we go now it's clicking perfect can put this big screw there keeping the ratchet wheel in place gonna oil all the pivot point as well on the dial side and now gonna put the escape with this bridge just need to make sure again like uh, go very gently to have the jewel and a pivot point like falling in the jewel there you see nudging it around and up oh, there we go just went in position there perfect just can secure it now with the screws and I'm gonna close to close to the moment of truth see when I'm gonna put the balance if the movement went to start for I'm gonna put a first a bit of a wine oiling the pallet fork jewel very tricky to do always 
and uh, we're gonna put a beautiful balance with this bridge. I love the shape of bridge here. Just finding the point there and just making rotating ever so slightly until he fell in position. Yes, and let's see if he starts. Wow, straight away. Perfect. Always nice when you put a balance and see it coming to life again. Movement is beating. Perfect. So now the movement is running. Gonna focus on the calendar mechanism and GMT function. So we're gonna reassemble first the calendar wheel. Again with the tweezers, keeping the spring out of the way. Doing everything with one end, keeping the spring and the other one doing all the other work. We're gonna first oil this little pivot point there. We're gonna put the jewel. You remember that go against the calendar wheel there. That's a little jewel, very, very small. Yes, and that's what's creating the jump. And you remember this watch has a issue with the date jumping at the beginning. So we see with proper lubrication and cleaning, see if the jump is coming back to what it's supposed to be. Putting the screw now, locating the shoulder there. Perfect. Okay, we're gonna put this beautiful GMT, like uh, unbelievable with this huge jewel. I never saw a jewel so big, yeah. Just gonna grease inside because there is some click there for the GMT. Putting the hour wheel, the spring on top. I'm gonna put like this small intermediate wheel that drive actually the calendar mechanism. Make the connection between the hour wheel and the calendar mechanism. Quite tricky to put in place actually. Yeah, that's it, it's coming, yeah. Putting this wheel there that makes the connection. And we can put back this big plate on top like which is very thick and heavy. We keep all these parts underneath in position and uh, where the calendar disc is gonna come and rest on top. There we go, just gentle press in position, just making sure again everything is aligned underneath. And you can see all the jewels there on the, on the side, on the bottom. It's actually for the calendar disc to slide uh, and without too much friction. That's unbelievable to see like uh, all these jewels just for uh, a calendar to, to slide. Uh, and like again, that's a testament to the quality of the movement here. Yeah. Putting all this blue screw there. We get like a bit of uh, grease on this uh, spring, like a date jumper. Gonna harm and put the date disc in position. Not yet. There we go. That's it. It's in position. Gonna oil the jewel there where we have this intermediate wheel I just put on. And let's see if the date is jumping now. So gonna change the time and see when it comes to 12. If it jump. Oh yeah, nice jump. Perfect. And you see we don't have like the hesitation if you want between two days. The jump is very sudden and that's how it should be on a Rolex. Uh, when it's done properly and uh, and maintained, and you see there, very very nice, a, a, a nice jump when the date is changing. Okay, we're gonna focus that after solving the first issue that we had on the watch. We're gonna assemble now the automatic system. Again, aligning the wheel and now putting this C clip in place, keeping the the weight the in position. Gonna assemble these two reversing wheel. Now we go, putting this wheel in the middle. And the top parts with the jewels just need to make sure everything is aligned properly. There we go. And when it is, we can put the uh, screws that will keep everything together. Now 
very simple but very efficient as well uh, uh, automatic module on his uh, on his watches oiling all the jewels see quite a lot of jewels again there okay so now I'm gonna put this uh, magnificent white dial back on the mechanism just secure it with the dive fist screw just make the date jump so that we can put the owl hand and on a watch when you have a day jump a sudden day jump like that it's very tricky to know when it's coming so what I like to do I like to put the owl hand I don't press it in place I just put it on and make it turn and obviously no now I know like it's almost set at 12 o'clock so when it comes to 12 o'clock I will slow down a bit oh you see the jump there and now I can readjust now I'm, I'm more precise uh, with the placement of the hour hand now I can press it in place gonna align the GMT hand to 12 o'clock as well align with the hour hand and obviously the date jump so we go I just need to align it there I'm gonna press it in place gonna do the same thing with the minute hand very tricky to put the minute hand because yeah it's quite tall there but we with an extra hand in between the hour and, uh, and a minute hand so quite tricky to put in place and I just want everything to be as aligned as as bad as as best as I can I'm just aligning the GMT hand there to 12 with the hour hand just aligning the minute now trying to align it to midnight perfect just gonna go and press it in position here we go and let's check when the date is jumping as close as possible to midnight oh yeah just like two minutes before midnight that's perfect 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 okay and so now we're gonna put this beautiful second hand love these black hands as well like on this uh, white dial the contrast is so nice just press it in place and gonna check now the second hand is beating gonna check the GMT function oh that's not normal you see when I'm moving the hour hand like the minute hand is working and even the GMT hand is working is moving sorry that's not normal at all yeah so there is something wrong there we saw at the beginning is the movement that's not it's not supposed to move yeah um so yeah we need to troubleshoot this issue uh, because yeah it's probably due to some uh, somewhere in some of the parts and you can see there the center yeah it's moving like it's turning it should not turn like only the the outside wheel should turn and you can see there there's quite a lot of play uh so i managed to reduce the play with my stacking set and as well I did some lanterning on a cannon pinion just to reduce because it was a bit too loose the cannon pinion so I did a bit of uh, lanterning on a cannon pinion and now I'm gonna reassemble everything and look at it now when I move the hour hand nothing else is moving so the issue is solved uh, perfect we have a nice jump on the date the GMT function is uh, bang on so the watch is perfect now so we can close it and put it back in the in a in the case just gonna realign the screw there in the hole there here we go just slide it underneath we're aligned where I can put the winding stem quite nice as well now so now we have a fully manual Rolex movement it's nice as well to have a uh, yeah that's why you have a lot of watches as well uh, which are manual when you can see through it's like it's, it's nicer you see you see a lot more mechanism compared with uh, you will see now we're gonna put the automatic uh, system on top of it and it will hide a lot of the parts so removing the power there just to put the automatic uh, system I like to do it without power in a watch and you see it's hiding quite a lot of parts 
But anyway, there is no see-through uh, uh, glass on his on his watch, so it doesn't really matter. Putting the screw there and just checking, putting a gasket which is greased. Change, uh, put a new gasket as well in the crown and tube. And we can close the watch. Again, using my Orotech tool there to close the watch. And as well, there is a Facebook group. If you want to go there, we put the description uh, down in a, in a video where you can chat about uh, tools on uh, Facebook uh, with Orotech. So that's a great, uh, a great group. Okay, I'm going to put back the bracelet and uh, going to see next what's the result we are getting on a time grapher. But first, I would like to take to you about my uh, website where uh, I uh, talk about my channel. I'm uh, selling as well some of the watches that I restored on the, on the channel. So if you want to buy some of the watches, you can go there on my website. And as well, like on this Rolex, if you want me to, to do a service on your watch or fix one of your watch, you can go there. And I will be more than happy to, uh, to service and repair uh, some of your watch. And here is a result on the, on the time grapher. You can see like the, the rate is bang on at uh, zero. Uh, so that's perfect. The bit error, it's uh, almost close to zero. And the watch is uh, running at uh, almost 200 neg 290 degree amplitude. Here we get loose with time as well, because now it's just been serviced where the time with oil, everything get in place. So, and this is a final result on my Rust. Beautiful watch, which is now running perfectly. I hope you like this service and I see you next time for my next episode. Bye bye.